Undoubtedly, we've seen some of the biggest price increases in homes throughout the United States. But it begs the question, are we really heading for a bubble that's about to pop? Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the housing market and see how healthy it truly is and if we're ready to see if that's going to pop anytime soon. So what is a housing bubble in the first place? A housing bubble occurs when home prices rise at a rapid pace, driven by the increase in demand, limited supply, and emotional buying. And once speculators realize that the home prices are going up, they start driving up the home prices even more. We saw that in 2007, 2006, right before the last crash. So when you hear that definition, you automatically think, well, of course, this housing market is seeing a bubble because we had an increase of real demand of houses since the pandemic. And you're thinking, of course, it's going to pop. One of the reasons why it possibly can't and it may not happen for quite some time is the fact that we don't have enough building materials throughout the United States to build houses as it is. Another thing is that a lot of home builders right now don't have the ability to build those homes because they don't have enough construction workers. Big companies like iBuyer, Zillow, OfferPad, and of course, Blackstone haven't been able to put a lot of the homes that they have purchased to put back on the market because they aren't able to flip them. Now, the CEO of Redfin has a reason why they haven't been able to put these houses back on the market for people to purchase, and I think you need to take a look at it. Builders are having a hard time bringing product to market. You also see that in the iBuying market. So Redfin, Zillow, Open Door, OfferPad, buy homes and then renovate them. And right now we can't get anybody to show up on site. They're either smoking dope or sitting at home or they're just busy with another project. And so the real challenge is just getting homes onto the market and getting them ready because there isn't enough labor to do all the work. That was pure genius on his part, <laughs> smoking dope. I mean, come on, super professional, by the way. But we all know that it isn't just the fact that maybe they can't get construction workers. It's also the fact building materials and the supply chain has been an issue. Again, this is not one of those signs that shows us that we're in a bubble right now. We're in a holding pattern until we see this bubble pop, in my opinion. Now, I've mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, when we've looked at previous housing markets that have crashed and the bubble has popped, the last housing crash had to do with a really a lot of bad loans. Those bad loans were written for people that had no business buying a home in the first place. And when a lot of those loans came due, a lot of people couldn't pay them. And then of course, over time, a lot of those houses hit the market as foreclosures, of course, driving the prices of homes down. In this case, we still have a high demand for homes that we still just don't have enough homes on the market. Now, if you look throughout the United States, it does seem that there is a little less demand and there's a little bit more houses heading onto the market, which is actually a good thing because this housing market has been extremely unhealthy for home buyers and is allowing people to be able to negotiate a little bit better for their packages. Some of these homes that were closing at the beginning of the pandemic, I mean, they were pretty much giving up all their rights to the contract and the sellers were winning everything and getting a whole bank load of money. Another thing I do want to point out that I have mentioned in many videos before, a lot of these home buyers that are purchasing houses are buying for a lot of money down or a lot of money cash. So this market right now is being held up by a lot of cash buyers or people that have huge down payments. The credit history of the people that have been buying houses for the last year and a year and a half have been going through much more rigorous steps to get qualified in comparison to years past. So the people that are purchasing now most likely aren't going to be the people that are foreclosed on. Again, that shows signs that it's not necessarily a bubble. We had a housing boom, but is the bubble gonna pop? Not this week. So how will you know that the market is churning and we're gonna see like a little, you know how like when the bubble goes through the air and it's about to pop and you know it's about to pop because you can see it because the rainbow starts breaking down? How is it that you'll know that moment? Well, an interesting story just came out of China and they have one of the biggest banks. Think of like Morgan Stanley and they have had a hard time paying off their interest in loans. And that's not a good thing. It's one of their biggest companies throughout China. Could this have a ripple effect into uh, the United States housing market? Again, that's one of those things time will tell. But I will say this, one of the most easiest ways to detect if the housing market is churning in your area is just take a drive around on a Sunday afternoon and see how many open houses there are and stop in a couple of them and ask the people, how long has this house sat on the market? Now, if the agent in the house has said that house has been on the market for more than 45 days, your market has churned. That would have been considered a healthy amount of time before the pandemic. Right now, that's a pretty long time on average. Another way you can tell that the housing market is kind of churning is if banks start letting up on the 
amount of accreditations you need to have to get a loan itself. If they're loosening up those restrictions for people to purchase a home, most likely they're in trouble and they need more people to write admin or loan packages, which is pretty dangerous because we saw that in the last housing crash. And another way for you to know if the housing market is turning in your area is all of a sudden it just seems like there's several vacant homes in your area. It could be that the people that lived in that house are about to go through the foreclosure process and they felt embarrassed so they left in the middle of the night. It happened a lot in Florida when I lived out there and it's definitely something to look out for. But our market is softening. It doesn't mean that the bubble is about to bust. It's still growing and we're still seeing people get a high return on their homes. Now we're going to see the same return on homes like we did at the beginning of 2021. I, there's no way. We might most likely see like a growth of maybe two to three percent, which would not be a bad thing because most home buyers right now can't find an affordable housing option. And I know a lot of people are heading for the idea that please let there be some kind of decrease in price. This could happen once the homes start heading into the foreclosure process if they can't pay back their loans. Now there still is 1.6 million people that are on the forbearance plan. If those people decide that they want to sell their home, they might be a little bit more forthcoming in reducing the price and more negotiable with you as a buyer. But we still have a lot of time before those houses ever hit the market. Not only that, those people have increased in value exponentially. So that if they are in a troubled state, they're going to probably be putting their house on the market and being able to sell it without having to go through the foreclosure process. Now, another website you want to check out to see if the market is churning and see if there's a lot of listings on it is HUDHomestore.com. I've talked about this website often. There's no affiliate link or anything like that. It's just a government website called HUDHomestore.com. And those are the HUD foreclosure properties. And they've already been pre-inspected. So you get to know exactly what's wrong with the property before you purchase it. And they're always willing to work with an individual home buyer before they're ever willing to work with an investor. So if you look on that website right now and you see three listings and a month from now you see 15 listings and then uh, two more weeks you see 25 listings, you know that the area is softening. And that's a good indication to know if the housing bubble is just fixing to pop. And yes, I said fixing. It's a Southern thing. So here's the thing. The real estate market is not a gambling chip. None of us have the same kind of deep pockets that can hold on to properties for an exponential amount of time and then turn around and sell them for a profit when we have enough money and time to do it. We're not Blackstone or iBuyer or any of these big investors. Most of us want to live in a house and if you plan on living in a house for another five to seven years, you're going to be just fine if you purchase a home right now. But if your plan is to only live in that house for a good two to three years, you're not going to win. The, the, this is one of those gambles. Don't take it. And if the home prices are currently too high for you right now and you can afford to not purchase a home and wait it out to see if the housing bubble pops, then go ahead and wait it out. If you have an affordable place to live and you're renting and you can make a bigger nest egg for a down payment later on down the road, then do that instead of strapping yourself in for that cash to get a house right now. So let me ask you, when do you think the bubble is about to burst? I want to know your opinion in the comments section. And what do you think is going to actually cause it? Is it going to be the stock market? Is it going to be interest rates? Is it going to be investment firms? Or is it going to be the banks failing? Let me know. I'm interested to hear your opinions. To watch more videos about about the housing market and what it's doing right now, go ahead and click these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.